Lord, and we give you your praise once again. Give you this event. Thank you so much. saying I'm coming, I'm coming, and today he finally came. I don't know who to thank, whether I think it's Brother Roger because he keeps coming. Is it you? Oh, Brother Tato says he's the one who forced them to come back. Thank you so much. Let us appreciate them. And, uh, and the thank you so much. And we are going to go to the Word of God. Amen. We will continue shortly. Uh, you know, because of the length of our service, we will try to keep it as short as possible. Um, we are going to continue with uh, the, the message uh, that Bishop uh, started with uh, last last uh, last week. I think he started it the other Tuesday. Uh, you are blessed beyond measure. Say with me, I am blessed, I am blessed. Beyond, measure. beyond measure. And uh, he was speaking about the different types or kinds of garments that uh, you know we find in the Bible and these garments they have got different meanings and uh, uh, he went to the story of Joseph and we all know that Joseph the Bible says he was a dreamer and he was loved by his father hallelujah and uh, because of that the father uh, made him a garment of many colors. Hallelujah. Uh, if, if I were to look who is wearing many colors, I would think a sister T who rep uh, represents uh, perfectly uh, the type of garment that Joseph was wearing. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, in, in, my, in my thinking, uh, the garment, it looks like it was the garment of love and favor. Hallelujah. Uh, we will go to the scriptures. It looks like it was a garment of love and favor because it is a coat of many colors. It is. It also attracted other things. Amen. 
because of the reason of many colors, it attracted many things. So it was a coat of favor, coat of love, uh, you know, coat of goodness, but it also attracted negative things, you know, such as hatred and, uh, you know, being forsaken, being sold, and so forth. Uh, but we see Joseph going to the pit. The Bible says they took off his garment, and when they took off his garment, he was now sold. And uh, when he went to Egypt, he was sold to a house of Potiphar and he was looking after the affairs of Potiphar and, 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 and the family. But when he got there, we also learned that he was given another garment. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this garment, the Bible says, when things happened, you remember the story when Potiphar went into him, the Bible says he ran away, but she also took off this garment. Hallelujah. Yeah. And after the garment was taken off, this was now the, the garment. It, it becomes the garment of accusation. Yeah. He goes into prison, and when he gets to prison, he is given, in our days, would say he's given an orange garment. You know that orange garment they wear in prison? He was that, now given that garment, which is now the garment of affliction. And when he's in prison, he meets two men, the butler and the, and the cup bearer. The Bible says, uh, after some time, I'm paraphrasing, he was now uh, restored or he was recalled from prison and uh, his recollection, the Bible says he went to the throne as the prime minister of Egypt. And Pharaoh declared and gave him a new garment, which is the garment of power. So this teaches me that in every step of our lives, one way or the other, you are wearing a garment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All of us in our lives, we are wearing garments. And there are different types of garments. There are garments of shame. There is a garment of death. That's why when there is death in some cultures, they wear, uh, you know, some, some cloth, a black cloth for a period of time. That is a garment of mourning or the garment of death. Now, but when we go and celebrate a wedding, we put on a garment, which is a linen garment. It's a garment that shows celebration. Are we together? So each one of us, we go through stages. And whatever we go through, it's as a result of a garment we are wearing. And I want to ask a question this wonderful day. What garment are you wearing today? And it's a pity because sometimes the garments, we wear them on our own, but sometimes situations and lives, they bring these garments to us. Sometimes it is not a garment of your choice, but it is a garment of your circumstances. Hallelujah. But I want to thank God today because there is a garment from above that is prepared for each one of us. And I want us to look at few things before I go to the main scripture. I want us to, I know I've already started preaching, I want us to pray for the word of God as I pray. Father, thank you for your word is alive, your word is powerful, and your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. We thank you today for, we believe that you will speak to us once again, Lord. Uh, may you please enlighten my ears of understanding our ears of understanding and anoint my lips of clay in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we thank you and the church said amen, amen. hallelujah um, say to your neighbor neighbor amen. I hope you are free if they don't take you serious look at the other one say neighbor I hope you are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want us to look at different types of garments. Shortly, it is 12 o'clock, I believe very soon we'll be out. Uh, and the Lord is going to help us. Hallelujah. Now, in my recollection, as I paraphrase, the first very garment that we see in the Bible it is when Adam and Eve had sinned against God. 
And you will remember the Bible says, I don't know if it's my mic, the Bible says, can you only hear me with this one? Hallelujah. The Bible says, after they had sinned in their life, they realized that they were naked. We remember the story, right? They realized that they were naked. And the Bible says, they went and sewed fig leaves. Hallelujah. And they created or they made garments so that they can cover themselves. I see my mother there as well. Just wave. Yes, you. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know what's happening today. Many people came uh, that we, we haven't seen in a long time, but we welcome you and may God richly bless you. Amen. Amen. We see Adam and Eve making fig leaves as a garment to close their sin. Hallelujah. So it means that when they realize that they are naked, they saw it fit that they need to have a garment that is going to cover their shame. So the first garment they wore, it was the garment of shame. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when God came, you remember the story, he asked them, Adam, where are you? And uh, you know the whole uh, shift from glory to a life of shame it made them to hide themselves from God. But as the story goes on in chapter 3, the Bible says, God then, he went and uh, created, or he, he killed an animal, and then he made them a, a garment that was a made of a skin of an animal. And that garment, it was a garment to close the shame of Adam and Eve. But what I'm learning from this story is that uh, the garment that came in a form of leaves, they are not immaterial, they are not strong. Hallelujah. In material, they cannot last longer. I don't know if, if you understand, if you are taking leaves and you are wearing leaves, you cannot last long with those leaves. When the sun is, you know, it is out, the leaves will dry quicker. So it means in order for them to keep, uh, to, to be covered, at all ways, it means daily they would need to do what? To sew the leaves so that they can cover themselves. So, this also teaches me that a garment that is man-made, it does not preserve whatever you're closing. Hallelujah. Amen. A garment that you, you, you make for yourself in order to cover your shame, it does not last longer. That's why God had to come and make a garment that is stronger than the leaves. Because what God is saying here is that it is not your ability to cover your shame. Because remember, no one can cover shame before God. So God says it is not, it is not in your make and in your nature to cover your shame. But I, the Lord, I am going to cover you. And the, you know, you know, the story of the Bible, the story of salvation is that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. In other words, we are all naked before God, but he came in the form of Jesus to cover our shame. Amen. So the first and the second garment leaves. The second garment was the garment of an animal. Hallelujah. But the story goes on. We see so many different kinds of garments in the Bible. I remember in the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says when the children of Israel, when they moved out of, of Egypt as they, were, they are going to the promised land, the garments or the clothing that they wore from Egypt, it did not expire on the road. For 40 years, you know, on Tuesday they were teaching us that the trip from Egypt to Canaan it was only for 11 days. But uh, they, 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 they rounded or they surrounded in the wilderness for 40 years. But the clothing that they wore, God preserved it for 40 years. They never changed their clothes. They never changed their shoes. You know, you and I will not last a year with one shoe. But in that wilderness, God covered them even in the scorch of the sun. Yeah. They never changed their clothes. Yeah. Because when you are covered by the Lord, you are preserved. Yeah. Hallelujah. And most of us, we come before God 
covering our shame, not knowing that all things before God are naked. Yeah. Are we together? Now, for the sake of our discourse this wonderful morning, I want us to go to our Bibles in the book of Luke. This is where our story is. Luke chapter 15. Uh, we will read from verse 1. It's, it's a whole chapter that we are going to read. But I believe the Lord is going to help us. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15. Uh, Papa Kutu will assist us. You will start from verse 1. We will go together. Uh, and the Lord will bless us. I think you can use this mic so that you don't strain your voice. Hallelujah. We can read from verse 1 and let, let's, let's go together. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. So, so the tax collectors and the sinners, the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. Yes. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and is, is with them. So he spoke the parable to them and said, so, so, so the tax collectors, the Pharisees, they now complain that this man is sitting down with sinners and is with and them. Is eating with, with them. Yes. Remember when Jesus said to them, I am not sent to the, you know, a doctor is not sent to people who are healed. But a doctor is sent to people who are sick, who are sick right? Continue, men of God. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, Yes. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? So, so as I paraphrase, which man, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one, does not leave the ninety-nine to follow the one that is lost. He's asking them, right? They are questioning themselves. They are busy uh, murmuring am among themselves that why is, is this man sitting or seated and eating with the sinners and all these people? Jesus says, who of you having a hundred sheep, when they lose one, would not leave the, the 99 and go fetch the one, right? Uh, that is the first dimension. There are three dimensions to this story. This is the first dimension. It's the dimension of the sheep. What is a sheep? I think you can sit down, man of God. Okay. A sheep, uh, for today, Bishop, we will excuse him, we will read sitting down uh, because it's a long chapter. So, the, the, the dynamic and the, and, the, and the sheep, a sheep is something that needs to be taken care of. Are we together? Amen. Jesus says in the book of John chapter 21, he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And uh, Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. For, for three times he asked this question. He continues to say, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep, mend my sheep, and it is it. So a sheep, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 12, my sheep hear my voice. But a nature of a sheep is that it is lost without a shepherd. Amen. So every sheep must be taken care of. Sheep in the house of God is those who are called infants. The people who are still, uh, you know, feeding milk in the house of God, they still need to be pampered, they still need to be taken care of, they still need to be directed and so forth and so on. Do you understand this dimension? Amen. So Jesus says, which one of you if you were to lose a sheep, now think of a sheep uh, uh, about the person that I've just described. If you are to lose a sheep, what do you do? You leave all of us and do what? Go fetch the sheep. Right? First dimension. Let us go to the second one. Verse 6. Verse 6. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, no. saying to them, it, 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 I think, I think, is it five that I must try to read? Okay. Five. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Now, when he found the sheep, what does he do? 
When you found the sheep on the streets, what do you do? You pick them up, right? What do you do? You pick them up. The nature of a sheep is it does not know where it must go or what it wants, right? But when once you find the sheep, you pick it up and then you bring it home. Please continue. Six. Six. When he comes home, yes, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Yes. Let's move on. Seven. Yes. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over nineteen or over ninety-nine just persons <coughs> who need no repentance. Hallelujah. So it's more important in heaven for a sinner to repent than those who are Russians and celebrating like us and dancing every day. God is more concerned about the lost sheep than all of us who are going to heaven. So he is waiting for the lost sheep to be found. And the only celebration that happens in heaven is when a sheep is restored. Let us continue. Eight. Yes. Oh, what woman? Having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin. Now, the first dimension was the dimension of a sheep and a man, right? Now, the, 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 there is a shift. It is no longer a man. It is a woman who is having how many coins? Ten silver coins. Ten silver coins, right? Remember, it's a man and a what? Are, are we going together? A man and a what? And a sheep. Now, it's a woman and a what? And a coin. Continue. If she loses one coin, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp. Does if if she loses a, a coin, does she not light a lamp, or sweep the house, or sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And search carefully until she finds it. Now listen to this story. The sheep is not lost in the house, but it's lost in the wilderness. In other words, it it, it can be a, an example of someone who was in the sheepfold but they went out from the uh, uh, of the sheepfold and they are and they are wandering right Amen. now the the second dimension is a coin a coin is a talent a coin is a gift now this dimension is a dimension of a woman when you read about a woman in the bible a woman is a sign and a symbol of the church that's what the Bible says. Which woman, which church, if they lose a what? A coin, if they lose a talent, if they lose a gift, which one of you does not take a light? What is a light? The word of God. So when the coin is lost in the house, you don't go outside like the shepherd, but you light the what? The, you light the lamp. The Bible says your lamp or, or your, your, your lamp is like it's, it's like path. How, how does it say? It's, it's like path unto my feet, right? So the word of God is light to us. Please rephrase there and let us just uh, correctly quote it. We're almost done. Eight, I repeat it. Oh, what woman, having ten silver coins. Ten silver coins. If she loses one. So if she loses one of, ten, of the ten. Does not light a lamp. She, she lights a lamp. Or sweep the house. And sweep the house. What does sweeping mean? It means... There has to be some fixing. The reasons why coins are lost and are not found is because things are under the carpet. There are so many things that are misplaced because if a coin falls here and the place is swept, it's easy for me to see the what? The coin. So Jesus is describing a house that needs to be swept. So when the coin is lost, you must switch on the lamp. Now, in other words, as long as they are in the house, continue preaching the word and the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't, you don't, you don't keep members by lying, but you keep members by the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because that, that these dimensions are very important. A sheep is without direction, without the shepherd. But this one, the fact that they are still in the house, they know the truth. When someone backslides and they are still in the house, it means the reason they are still coming is because they know the truth. So when they come or when they keep coming, all you do is you keep 
lighting the lamp. And you keep sweeping the house. What? What does sweeping the house mean? It means you keep fixing the house so that you can find them wherever they are hiding. Hallelujah. Continue, man of God. Verse 10. Verse 10. Likewise, Likewise, I say to you, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels. There of is God. joy where? In the presence of the angels. Of God over one sinner. Over one sinner. Who repents. Who repents. Are we together? Now, in other words, the celebration that takes place in heaven mostly is the celebration that has got to do with the repentance. So if you and I, when we were praying during intercession, we were repenting, in heaven, they are rejoicing. Heaven does not rejoice when I buy a new car. I want you to understand this. Heaven does not stand on their feet and they start celebrating when you buy a mansion. Those are bread of the children. You know, your car, your, your, your marriage, all those things, they are bread to us. So heaven does not rejoice when you get a new job. It is by default. In the book of Ephesians, Chapter 1, the Bible says, we were blessed with all spiritual blessings yeah. before the foundations of the world. So when you get a promotion, God is not shaken. But God celebrates when your heart repents and turn away from the wicked ways. That's why a life of a believer should be a life of someone who improves in repentance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, I'm blessed. Yes. Beyond, measure. Beyond measure. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us continue. So the angels rejoice when one sinner repents. Verse 11. Verse 11. Then he said, he said, A certain man had two sons. A certain man had two sons. We know the story. Hallelujah. Someone says two sons. A certain what? Now I want you to understand the scriptures very carefully. When the Bible speaks about this story, it says a certain man. It, now, the first one was a what? Was a man and the sheep, right? Number two, it was a woman, the church, and the coin, right? Number three, it's a certain man. man. Now, listen to how the, the, the scriptures are so nice. Listen to the dynamics and how it goes. He could have said someone, someone, but he speaks about the man, he speaks about the woman, because there are dynamics to it. So the third dimension of the story is the, is the dimension of the father and the son. lost son. Right? Yeah. Now, a certain man had how many sons? Two sons. Two sons. Let us continue. Two. And there are, there are always these two types of sons in the house of God. Verse 12. Yes. And the younger of them said to his the father. The younger of them said to his father. You know, the young ones, they're inexperienced. They always want to go and experiment, you know, and they come back ahead and we pray for them. You know, you know how the nature of a child, they want to go touch the fire and they are bent and they realize they've got a scar that you grow up with because certain things that happens in our life, even when we are healed internally, the scar will remain. Some of you will understand me. There are certain things that will be healed but there will be signs that you will enter the grave with that will never leave you. So, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to mention this, but this is what I pondered on. If I sin, God forgives me, right? If I repent. But, but let me give you... Uh, if, if I am a thief, right? And I go to a house jump the gate and someone hits me with a with a stone they hit me here and i have a mark that is open i will go to the doctor the doctor will 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 stitch me but the mark will remain so even when you are no longer a thief the enemy always reminds you because when you look at the mirror you see the scar the enemy always comes to accuse you of something that happened 20 years ago and says, hey, I can see you are sailing, but you remember when you stole in family so and so and they gave you a scar. That is the nature of the accuser, right? So certain things that we do, they, you know, when you sin, there are three places where you are dented. You are dented 
in your body, you are dented in your soul, and you are dented in the spirit. But there are places that can be healed and there are places that will remain the same. Yeah. Your body can be restored. Your soul will always have an image of the wrong that you have done. But God, when he comes and washes you, you are washed clean. But I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying to you that let us not do things by saying that I, God will forgive us. Because certain things, even when you enter marriage, you enter with scars. And those scars, they keep haunting you until the grave. Okay, am I speaking to people? Yes. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Beyond, measure. Beyond measure. Let us continue. I think I off a little bit. I see. Amen. It's not coming out a lot. Let us continue. Continue with 12. Yes. Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Yes. So he divided to them his livelihood. So he divided to them his livelihood. Good. Yes. 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal. Hold it there. So after he asked from the father, the Bible says, the father distributed. Please repeat that statement. I want to understand it carefully. And not many days after. Uh, before that. Okay. Or before that. Father, yes. give me the portion of of good that falls to me so number one all of us before remember the bible says there was a man and the son right the man and the sons but when the son asked he asked him as a father because there's a difference between a man and a father so all of us before god we have got portions that belongs to us are we together? Amen. We are all blessed. There are portions that are rightfully yours. That's why you are blessed beyond measure because every one of you, you have got a portion that belongs to you. Continue to uh, uh, where, where you stopped and then let's, let's move forward. So I'm going to 14 now because I, I just read 13. I didn't finish 13. Finish it off okay. again. Let me repeat it. And not many days after. And not many days after. The younger son gathered all together. So, so after he asked, it's not like he asked today and tomorrow he took all his baggage and left. The Bible says, after some days, he the gathered all that he had and he left. Continue. Journey to a far country. He went to a far country. And there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And then when he got to this country, he wasted his portion and his belongings by living prodigally. Are, 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 are we following? If you are following, say amen. amen. Are we following? Amen. So he went to a far country. Yes. You see, what happens with the enemy, each time he wants to separate you from, uh, you know, from, from the house of the father, he takes you and drives you to a far country. A far country may not be literally a place that is far, but he goes and attaches you to strange things. So that when you are thinking of coming back, you are thinking of the distance and all the things that you have passed through. And then you realize, no, it's too far for me to go back. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is the nature of the enemy. He will make sure that he takes you from the father's house to a far distance because in the distance you are meeting so many things you know you are you are passing sometimes when you pass uh, you know when you have money it is in the nature of people where, who won lotto that's why they blow it quicker when you won lotto you know the first thing uh, i may not tell you but you will see the sun the signs when i come here probably the first Sunday i will come and remove this mukuk here and finish and I'll be coming here with a two-door car. Those are the signs. So when I pass the first people, the first set of people, I'm leaving the house. I will first just throw them with a few hundred bucks. So when I think of passing the same place without money, it's a problem. Because these people, they know me as someone who has money. So I will pass a place where I lie to this one. I will come and give you a tender. I passed, they are still waiting for a tender. So your way back, you are thinking of a tender of 
the people I promised, yeah. of this house I promised. So the enemy has got a tendency that as you leave the house, he, he places mountains that will be difficult for you to cross back. Yeah. Yeah. So he turns into a what? A far country. Let us continue. 14. Oh, welcome my mother again, that side. Yeah, you are welcome, amen. Thank you so much. But when he had spent all. But when he, now, before, before we get to the Bible says, he went to a far country and he attached himself to the people of that place. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine someone who lives the royal house, who lives the house of the father. They live with a proper garment. Are we together? Yes. When they live, they live with a what? With a proper garment. So when you pass, they can tell, no, this person, it's not poor. This person is from a rich place. I can imagine him living there with some proper robe because the father gave him everything that belongs to him. So he left with a proper garment. And then he looked all glittering and all good and all beautiful. The Bible says he went and attached himself to the people of that country. Continue, man of God. But when he had spent all... But when he had... You know, this concept of I blew it, it does not start today. Hallelujah. You know, someone who blows 20 million in a year, it does not start today. In those days, he was rich. this son was rich because the father was a big man. So he gave him a good portion, but he went and blew. So I'm sure when we get to heaven, if we find this son, we must ask him, how did you blow it? So the Bible says he went and spent all that he had. And then after he had spent it, you know, money is a problem. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The love, it does not say money. I saw some posts going on on yeah. Facebook saying, uh, I don't know why the church keep receiving money, whereas the Bible says money is the root of all evil. The Bible does not say money is the root of all evil. No. The Bible says the love of money. If, if we don't have a money as a church, we are doomed. Hallelujah. A proper church is a church that is filled and fueled with money. That when these people here, they are singing, after, after they have sang and sweat, we just take out some few thousands and say, God bless you. I was watching a few weeks back a story on Facebook, some pastor I'm challenging the bishop now some pastor went on and uh, on Sunday uh, those guys who are playing instruments they called them in front like I called the three brothers to stand up and then when they came in front, the pastor you know, said, uh, you see what I'm carrying, I'm carrying three keys it's car keys, and then he blessed them, he says I'm blessing you for, just for playing here so, so we must be that type of a church yeah. where we don't have a problem. We ask you, how much do you owe Absa? And then we we'll go to the books. Oh, this one is a faithful uh, uh, title. This one, when they are saying contributions, uh, this one's no, come here. I see you're struggling. Can we just sort out this Absa problem so that we can give to the project? Yeah. That is where we should arrive as a church a church of power. Am I deviating from the message? But the problem is money. So the money, when he has the money, he goes and spends the money because the only thing you can do with money is spend. As a matter of fact, those who have studied physical science, not physical science, but money is measured in what? Currency. Currency in physical science, it means movement. So when money is not moving, it means it loses value. You see the money that you, you put under mattress and your socks and the, the ones that you have there, that money, if it's not used, it is losing value, it is useless. You see, the money that you keep sending to your own mutual uh, insurance and, and you are waiting for your death and you are, you are failing to buy bread for the children because you are paying a funeral policy You've got five funeral policies for your mother or for your grandmother who is soon to die. And you are, you are hoping that when they die, I'm going to cash in. But you do not have money to come and give in the church. The love of money is the root of all evil. Hey, we are 
struggling, Pastor Aaron. Let's 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 just uh, come with uh, uh, five bags of cement because remember, our building should be completed before summer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But what is the problem? The problem is, I've kept the money. It's not moving, and when it's, it does not move, there is no flow. There is no if there's no movement. If money does not go out, money will not come in. Right? But that's not where my message is. He went and spent all the money. Yes. And the Bible says, when he had spent all, let us hear. There arose a severe, a severe famine in that land. After, just after, he has spent everything. The Bible says, a famine came in that land. And he began to be in want. And he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. So he goes, he's left the royal house, he goes and, and becomes a, 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 a street kid. And uh, as a street kid, he goes and finds a family and becomes a worker in that house. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So this man he sees this boy and says, come, uh, you know, I will give you a job. I want you to take care of my pigs. Continue. 16. Yes. And, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the post that the swine ate. So this, this man was happy to, to feed the pigs. And after feeding the pigs, and then he ate from the crumbs. And no one gave him anything. And no one gave him anything. 17. Just hold it just hold it a little bit there. Because we are we are soon closing. Now you can imagine someone who comes from a royal house. Amen. And this particular person, they've got everything in their home. They've got everything in their house. You are you are safe in the house of God. In the shadow of his wings you've got protection. But you went out Hallelujah. And when you go out, because of the shame and the promises that you made along the way, you would rather be happy to eat from the crumbs of the pig. And between you and I, if anyone here was to ask me if I will eat anything from the pigs, I would, I would rather die. But the, the, the intensity of the story it is to show you how bad the situation became for this guy to a point where a master is a servant not to a servant it's a servant to an animal because this is what sin does what sin does in our lives it makes us slaves to sin hallelujah Amen. say I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Beyond, measure. beyond measure what does sin do it causes you to be a what? A slave. That's why a singer says, I am no longer a slave to sin. Because that is what sin does. It enslaves you. So the things that you want to do, you don't do. But the things that you do, you don't want to do. That is when sin has come to have a grip of you. So this man, as a king and a son of a king, he left the house of grace and now he is feeding the swine. Let, let, let us continue. I wanna, 17. I wanna 17. But when he came to himself, now, when he came to his senses or to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with, with hunger? Now, listen to this. We said three dimensions. One is the, is the, is the, Man and a what? And a sheep. The second dimension is a woman and the what? And the coin. The third dimension is a what? A father and a and a son. It has changed from a, a, a man to a father, and I'll explain how if I, I, I find time. Now, the third dimension, we said the first dimension, the sheep has got no power to bring itself. You must go fetch it. The coin in the house, we preach. And, 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 and you know, coins, you don't really entertain them a lot because they are here, they will hear the truth. 
Because when you hear the truth, the truth will what? Will set you free. That's why there are certain people when they decide to do things, just leave them as long as they are hearing the word. Because if you keep tapping them and you keep entertaining them, there's a problem. But the sun, no one goes after the sun. Listen to this. The, the shepherd leaves the 19 and is go, I'm going to look for, yeah. for the sheep. Yeah. This woman, he leaves this uh, 10 coins and says, I'm going to search for the other coin. But when the sun leaves, no one goes after the sun. You know why? Because sons are in maturity, wise and understand their belongings. And I usually say that this man, he was given a name called prodigal or someone who, uh, you know, who, who lives a reckless life, but they did not remove the word son from him. That's why it was still called the prodigal son. You know, the good thing about the story of this man is that even when he was wasteful, he was still a son. So the father will not even send one of his servants and say, hey, just go and check for me which country did you go to? Because there are people who are matured enough to understand that what I'm doing is wrong. So the father does not waste time to say, hey, listen, you know, you know, uh, when you are a parent, you understand that this one, you don't leave, let them go to the bathroom. You know, my, my son, the last born, when he, he starts going to the bathroom, we all run after him because we know he's going to open the toilet seat and start playing with the water. When he goes to the kitchen, we make sure that we run for him because we know he's going to open all these things and, and make a mess. But when Sobo, there's a difference, dimensions. Yeah. As parents, we must know our place. Yeah. When Sobo does something, we don't run after Sobo. We say, Sobo, come here, sit down. This is wrong. And they won't do it again because they know it's wrong. Yeah. There are certain people, if they want to be banned, let them get banned. They will live with the consequences. Yeah. A son, you can't tell a son that this is fire because they know it's fire. Are we together? Amen. You cannot say to hey, my child, my son, don't put your finger on that uh, fire, it will bed you. You leave them. Before you die of stress, parents, <laughs> you are, you are at, you've got a, 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 a heart condition because of someone who understands that the fire burns, but they still go to the fire. All you can do, I can imagine the heart of the father. He does not run after the son because when you run after the son, he loses his title as a son. He becomes a child. But all the father does is to keep praying for the son. That one day, my son will return. And you will realize that this man was praying when we go forward. And I want to close. What time is it? I think I've already taken over 30 minutes. 38 minutes now. Please, let's finish it off. Uh, 18. I think if you increase the, the volume, it will cost me to finish quicker. I will arise and go to my father. Now, when he comes, he says it's because sons, they are not told what is true and what is wrong. On their own, they think about life and realize, hey, I'm in the wrong place. This fire will burn me. This place that I'm in is not comfortable. And on your own as a son, and I want to challenge each one of us, if you are doing wrong as a son, don't wait for anyone to challenge you. You must challenge yourself. There's a scripture by Paul that says, don't wait for God to judge you. You must become your own judge because you will not be able to withstand the judgment of God. So as a son, speak to yourself every morning when you wake up. No matter how many times you may have fallen, don't remain a sinner in your fallen ground. Rise up and say, I will go back to my father's house. Because this man says, oh, in my father's house, there are servants. There is enough food. Let's continue, man of God. Give me about 10 minutes. And we'll say to him, Father. And you will say to him, Father. I have sinned against heaven and before you. So he goes to his, his father. I don't know if you are reading a correct Bible, sir. Start, start from the, the, the first statement. 
18. 18. I will arise and go to my father. He says, I will arise and go to my father. Uh, in 18, right? And now, I will now, say. Now, now, take note of the, of the father, the first father there. It's a small letter F. Does your Bible show a small letter F? Yeah. If it's good news, uh, you must throw it. <laughs> good news is, is Bible for the soldiers. It was, it was made quick so that the soldiers can go to war. Amen. And if it's Zulu, it might not have obeyed it. But the correct one, it says, I will go back to my father with a small F. Continue, man of God. The second father, you will tell me what your Bible says. 19. 19. And uh, it's the same. It's the same statement, right? From 18... Read from 18, from go 18, forward. Okay. Yes. I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father, small letter. It means there are two dimensions here, right? I will go back to my father, small letter, yes? And I will say to him. And I will say to him. Father. Father, with a capital letter. I have sinned against I heaven. have sinned against you because he can't say to his smart father with a small f, I have sinned against heaven. And before he, you. He, this was a prayer. I, when you pray, you don't pray to your father on earth. But he says, I will go back to my father and say, Father, because when you fix issues, you don't fix issues with the bishop. When you fix your life, you don't fix your life with the bishop. But you go back to the house of the father with a small F. And when you are there, you say, Father. Because a, a, a prayer cannot be made to a man. So repentance, Pastor Ron, is not what we do when we are here crying and uh, ushers coming with the laps and, and wipe us and we roll and we... No, crying is when you are alone and you are saying to your Father in heaven, Father, I have sinned. Don't wait for intercession. Right, I met a fellow about intercession. I don't know, let's just repent. Amen. Don't wait for intercession. Because your heavenly Father can already hear you. Okay, continue. 19. I have sinned against against heaven and before you. And I have sinned against heaven and before you. And before you. Two dimensions. 19. 19. And I am no longer worthy to and be. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Your son. Now, that is the heart of a repentant son. You don't come with pride. And so, oh, we know these things. We've been doing it for a long time. When we go to God, He forgives us. You know that heart. When we go to God, the Bible says, "Go to Him." A man can fall seven, uh, how many times, yeah. and rise again. But a true son says, "Father, I'm not worthy yeah. Yeah. to take to have a share in Your table." Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. A man with a humble heart, a repentant heart, says, "Father, I'm not worthy to stand even before Your people. I feel so much dirty." I am not worthy. Continue. Make me like one of your hired servants. Make me. Just says, even if I can clean in the house of God, even if I can just cook, even if I can just uh, carry water, even if I can do instruments, make me one of your hired servants. Continue. And he arose and came to his father. You see, no one, the enemy will not encourage you to arise. But as a son, you must arise on your own. As your son, you must mend your ways and arise on your own. Continue. But when you are still a great way but off. When you are still a, a distance, you know, I can imagine those days in the valleys. This father has got his house there and the neighbor is maybe a few kilometers away. So the Bible says, when he was a distance away. Continue. His father saw him and had compassion. His father saw him and had what? Compassion. And said, ran and fell on his neck I, and kissed him. I said to you before, the father was praying. Why? We see he had an expectation to see his son again. Yeah. Yeah. It means every morning when the father wakes up, he looks around and says, hey, I've got good servant. Hey, I've got uh, that my son there, but I am missing something. I, as a father, I don't have the capacity to go down and pull him out of his uh, doings and dealings. The Bible says every, it, it would, it's not the Bible, it would look like every morning he was sitting somewhere on a high place waiting to see someone coming. And this is the heart of God. Each time he is in his throne, he's waiting.
waiting for you to come back. Because the Bible says, how do you see someone from a distance? How do you even know it's him? Because I'm sure the garment that he left wearing is not the same that he came with. But the Bible says when he saw him from a distance, he did not wait for him to arrive in the house. He went for him. The Bible says he went for him and he hugged him and kissed him. Continue, man of God. 21. 21. And the son said to him, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Yes, and in the same scenario, yeah. there is a father there with a small letter, and there is a father with a big letter. Every detail in the Bible is meaningful, even a comma. Yes. Continue. I have sinned against heaven in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Yes, this is a repentant heart. Yes. Twenty-two. Yes. But the father said to his son, the Bible says, if you if you humble yourself by the side of the Lord, yeah. He will yes. lift you up. Yeah. Right? Yes. Continue. But the Father said to His servants, the, the Father said to His servants, Bring out the best robe. Bring out the best robe. And put it on Him. And put it on Him. Yes. Put a ring on His hand. Put a ring on His hand. And sandals on His feet. And sandals on His feet. My goodness. So there is a best role that you have not yet seen. Someone say, I am blessed beyond measure. I want us to stand on our feet. Now, men of God, I want us to repeat that statement. What verse is that? 22. 22. Yes. Let us run to the... Someone help me to the section where the, the older son complains. We will come back to, to that verse. Verse 25. Thank you, uh, Pastor Stone. Uh, please read verse 25. Now his older son was in the field. Now, when the older son comes from the field, and as he came, and when he came, drew, drew near to the house, yes, and he heard music and dancing. Yet there was celebration. 26. 26. So he called, he called one of the servants. He called one of the servants. And asked what these things mean. And he says, hey, what is happening? What is the meaning of this thing? And he said to him. And the servant said to him. Your brother has come. Your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and, and sound. And because the father has received him safe and, and sound. sound. Look, notice that the restoration did not happen when the son was in the house. Ah. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah. Deliverance and they struggle with deliverance. Deliverance happens when you are still alone, saying, Father, I am coming back to my senses. There is no person you can deliver unless they are decided. Yeah. Because deliverance is not just a laying of hands falling and coming. You must decide. So the Bible says the servant said, The father is happy because the son came back safe and delivered. So. Hallelujah. Yeah. He came back safe. Safe and what? And sound. Continue. Your father has killed the fat and Your cow. father has killed my, 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 my Bible. It says your father has killed that. I don't know if there's a vision that has that one. It's verse 20? 27. Verse 27. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed that fetid calf. So it means there was a calf somewhere that the father and the brother knew all along. There is a calf waiting for you. There is a calf. It's not just a calf. It's a fetid calf that is there waiting for you. Waiting for you to come back to your senses. Waiting for you to come back to your possession. And he says, no, the father, that, you remember that calf? The father has killed him for the son. Yes, continue. But he was angry. But he was angry. Look, and will not go in. Look at the heart of a believer. Look at the heart of a, of a fellow brother and sister. When a brother repents, the other one says, oh, this cannot be. It's not possible. Continue. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. And his father went and begged, oh, my son, come on. So he answered. Yes. And said to his father, 
No, this many years I have been serving you. I have been serving you for so many years. I never transgressed. I've never trans. I've never sinned. Your commandment at any time. At any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat. And you never even gave me a thin goat. That I might make merry with my friends. Just to paraphrase this, because my time is, is, is elapsed. There are people that will never celebrate your restoration. That's why you should not trust all men. You can love all of them, but don't trust all of them. That's why there's no one who will celebrate when you are in a good state. Someone will not celebrate when you are coming back and you are becoming yourself. I mean, instead of this guy saying, oh, I haven't seen my younger brother in a long time. Hey, come here, little brother. Let's, let's catch up. What went wrong? What happened? He begins to complain as if he's the one who owns the calf. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say to each one of you, there is a fetid calf especially for you. And I, I don't want you to, don't mind the people next to you. Because here's the thing. People will always judge you based on your past. But God will judge you based on your heart. So, you know, it is understandable. Uh, you know, I always say to people that, that are married that if you and your wife are fighting, say that the Kutu is fighting with Makutu, which is it's normal. Sometimes you fight. They were telling us on Tuesday that some divorces, uh, the rate of divorce in South Africa, sometimes it's because someone refuse to switch off the light when they sleep. <laughs> so it's like, oh no, this one is... Some, some, some they fight because of Colgate. The other one squeeze Colgate from the top. The other one... So they go and divorce because of that. So fights are normal in marriages, right? But when you fight with your wife, you don't go to your brothers and sisters and your mother. When you go and tell them and tell your family, they say, hey, I'm sorry, you and I, hey. When you and your wife reconcile and you're busy eating cherries there and you have taken her to KFC and you are now together, your family still have got the idea of your fighting. Yeah. So your, your brother and your sister, they still have an idea of your old you. Yeah. But you have already fixed issues with God. Not in the house. While you are still in the pigs. Hallelujah. Let's return to the garment and then we close. Verse, I think it was. Yeah. Then, then, then we finish. Ah, there are a few verses I wanted to quote, but because of time, I will not go through them. Verse 30. Verse 30. But as soon as this son of Jesus came. No, no, no. It's the. Verse 22. Oh, let's go back to 22. Yes, please. But the father said to his servant. The father said to his servant. Bring out the best robe. Bring out the best robe. And put it to him. And on put him. it on him. And put a ring on his. And put a ring on his finger. I think I've read this one. Yes. The, the, other, the one that I've jumped into and prayed. Yes. That says, and bring the fetid calf here and kill it. Yes. And let us eat and be merry. Let us eat and be merry. Continue. Third. Yes. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with her lords or her lords, you killed the fetid cow for him. Yes. 81. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. That's the problem that those who are righteous don't understand. That everything that belongs to the Father belongs to you. That's why it is important as a child of God to have the eyes of God. What do I mean? It's important for you and me, when we look at our brothers and sisters, we look at them through the eye of God, not through our eyes. And when we love them, we don't love them through our heart. We love them through the heart of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we don't, then if God blesses my king, then I've become jealous. When God blesses my brother here, then I become jealous. And that's where witchcraft comes from. And it's the last scripture. So, so we don't even have, okay, let's read the last scripture last and then we pray. Last, it was right that we should make merry and be glad. Yes. For your brother was dead 
for your brother was dead and he's alive now, again. What does this teach us? When you live in sin, you become dead. dead. Yes, continue. And is alive again. And is alive again. And was lost. And was lost. And is found. But is found. But the exciting thing is that when he came from a distance, the Bible says the Father welcomed him. Now I'm here to tell you today that the Father is ready to welcome you. And not just welcome you, there is a best rope waiting for you. You can ask yourself, when did the Father make this rope? Because this guy took all his things and left to a far country. It means when the son left, the father knew that when he comes, he will come back with filthy garments. So as a result, I must start preparing a garment. Jesus says, in my father's house, there are many nations. I go so I can prepare. In other words, even to those who have been slain, God hopes that one day they will come back. So each time he prepares a mansion for you, each time he prepares a garment for you, each time he prepares a ring for you, each time he prepares a feathered car for you, when you come back to your senses. And I want to say this wonderful day that you are blessed beyond measure. Hallelujah. You are blessed beyond measure. And that blessing of the Father, it comes as a form of a garment. And today, we are putting off the garment of shame and we are putting on the garment of glory. There is an honor that is being released upon your life. And that honor is called the garment of honor and the garment of glory. When the enemy will look at you according to your past, God looks at you according to your future. And I'm here to tell you that today there is an anointing of a new garment. Amen. The garment of grace. The garment of favor. I want you to say after me in the name of Jesus. Amen. I wear a garment of favor. I wear the garment of grace. I wear the garment of glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, behold, behold, the former things are gone. Behold, the new things are ahead of me. And today, I take on the garment of grace. I take on the garment of favor. I take on the garment of prosperity. I take on the garment of healing. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. Jesus. Please come. We, 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 will not, we will not pray for anyone. Uh, did I see the one for me? Alright. Can we have assist? Are we not gonna we're not gonna pray you are blessed? Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. We are going to seal all this. In the blood of Jesus Christ. Someone please assist. Uh, I see.